Hey guys. So today we are going to have a look at the overlap component. This is a rather simple component, but it has a lot of different use cases. And in this example, we will start with the drag overlap component. So this overlap component is specially designed to interact with the drag component. We have included one of these examples here in this map, and I'm going to actually show you how we created this. So here we have a button that is already set up with the drag component. And if you don't know how to set up the drag component, please have a look at our drag component tutorial. So I will not cover the details here, but basically we have a very simple drag component on the linear set axis that will just push the, um, push the button in. So like, let me quickly change this here. Minus 15 is the other extreme. So let's just going to show you what this is doing. So it's toggling between this state and this state. And yeah, then we have the base. There's nothing special with the base around it. And we have the button itself. This is the one that is being moved. So what we want to create here is we want to be able to push this button in with whatever we decide to, to, to use for that. In that case, we just use this simple box here. So it just has a grab component. I can basically grab it. And right now, if I hit play, you can see I can grab it. I can move it around, but nothing is happening with, with this button here. So no matter what I try, it's not interacting. And the reason for that is, well, there is no overlap component. So let's go in there at an overlap component. And you can already see we have our base class, the component overlap, and our two child classes, the component overlap for components, where we can trigger other components. We will do this after that. And the component overlap for our drag component. This is the one we need here because we want the overlap component to talk with the track component. So let's add it here and go through the settings together. First of all, it wants to know the component tag of the track component. Well, this is easy. We just go to the track component and there's already a tag. If there's none, please add one yourself and it should be a descriptive name. In this case, I'm just going to copy the name over and paste it in here. So this is good to go. Next thing, of course, there's this enabled and um, not disabled. We want to have it enabled here. Component tag of collision. So this is asking what is the primitive component of the um, component that is actually detecting the overlap. So in this case, we don't want to have the base. The base is just really static. It should not trigger anything. But the button itself should trigger the overlap component because as soon as we, as the cube overlaps this button here, we want to trigger it. So this is the one we're searching for. Let's go down to the tag section. And here again, there's already a component tag. I'm going to copy it and paste it in the component tag of collision. One thing to notice there, you need to have a proper collision in order for this to work. If you don't have a collision or your mesh is set to ignore collision, it will not work. So for an overlap to work, you, you should of course set it to, to overlap. And also make sure that the generate overlap events is also set to true. Otherwise, if it's like block all, there will be no overlap and the component will not work. So just keep that in mind. Collision presets and the generate overlap events are important here. And the player collision. So you can see we have a very simple collision here. You can see the collision at the top here. If you go to simple collision, you should have a simple collision for your mesh. If don't, you need to create one. Otherwise, this will also not work. So make sure to include a simple collision there. OK, the next thing. Actually, we are almost already set up, but 
what we want to do, so here we can define actor type to allow, objects to allow, or component text to allow. So we can either allow complete actor types or specific objects or actors that have a specific or components that have a specific tag. Okay, let's actually add an actor type here to allow. In this case, we want to have the cube here. So it's BP shape cube small. Let's add this to the actor type to allow. Cube small. Cube small. And let's check the settings again. So we have the drag component connected. It's enabled. We have the component tag of the collision mesh. The mesh has a simple collision and is set to overlap. So this will work fine. We have added the class here. Okay, let's give this a try. So now you can see as soon as the cube starts overlapping the button mesh, it will nicely follow the movement of the cube until it is completely pushed in and pushed out. And of course, this will work for all the settings you have in the drag component. So here you only have a very simple push down, but this will also work for something like rotations um, or even if you drag it along a spline, this will also work. So everything you can do with the drag component, you can basically trigger it with the component overlap drag. Next, let's have a look at the other overlap component the overlap component for components themselves. Okay, let's create a new blueprint here, like an overlap area. I'm going to use this static mesh here as, as a visualization for the overlap area. Let's go in there and create a new blueprint actor. Open it up and add our static mesh here. So I'm just going to select it in here. So this way, when I create a static mesh, it already has the same name and the same mesh and material applied to it. And I want to use this as a visualization. But let's go in there and add another box collision, because the box collision is actually the one I want to use to trigger. The other one really is just for visual representation. Because if I go to the player collision, you can see it doesn't even have a collision at all. So I'm not going to use that. Instead, I'm going to use the box collision here. But again, you can use every mesh you want. So let's scale it appropriately to the size of this cube here, like this. And this should be our overlap trigger. The name doesn't really matter here, but what's important is that we create a component tag here. So let's call it overlap trigger box and hit compile. Um, the cool thing with this trigger box is it's already set to overlap all and the overlap events is already set to true. So you don't need to worry about anything there. We can just hit save and compile. And now I'm going in there and add our overlap. And this time we use the component overlap component, just like this. And let's go through the settings. Most of them you are already quite familiar with. Let's let's drop it here in the in the level near the cube because we are also going to use this cube here as a trigger for now, like this. And let's go through the settings together again. So component to trigger. Right now we don't have anything we actually want to trigger here. So I'm going to skip this for now. But we can already say, okay, it is enabled. And the component tag of the collision, we can already set it to this overlap trigger we created. So let's set this in 
here and the actor types to allow let's use our small cube again like this and hit save so this is already set up for now like with any other trigger we have the component to trigger definition and in there we can define okay what should be the tag of the component we want to trigger and on what actor is this component so we need an actor maybe let me check this one here so this one has a component active that would be perfect let's put it in here scale it up a little bit so we can better see what's going on there like this and let's tell our overlap component that the light bulb is actually the tr actor to trigger so we want to trigger this actor here and on there we want to toggle this component active so i'm going to copy the component tag go back to my overlap component and here under component tag to search for i'm going to add the very same name like this and yeah we don't need to trigger the box itself because we don't have any logic there we can add this later if you want to but for now we can just turn this off we don't need an identifier for now this is interesting if you want to do more complex stuff and a trigger toggle is like an alteration switch that might be useful but first of all let's try out if this is already working like we suppose it should do so the light is off that's fine let's grab our cube and try to see what happens if i overlap this box so now it's turned on and as soon as it leaves the box again the light is also off just like that Perfect. Everything is working like it should. So the last thing I wanted to show you is basically the trigger toggle. Let's activate this one here because for light bulb this might actually be quite cool. So if I grab the cube and overlap it, the light goes on and if I leave it, it stays on. But the next time I go through it, it will go off again so now you really have created like a toggle function on off on and off let me show you one quick example i have created for the Arthas map here so in here we also use this overlap component for example to trigger lights let me show you how that looks so as soon as I get close here, you can see the the infographics appearing and if I go away, they also this go away. Or with this mesh here, it's static and as soon as I get into the overlap component, I trigger the active component and the mesh starts rotating. Same is true here for the lights. If I get close, the lights turn on and off. So yeah, a lot of simple examples for the overlap component. I hope that gives you a good understanding of what you can do with the component overlap. Um, I showed you some examples, but really go in there and play around with it. You can do so many great things with it. So this is really one of my favorite components we have added in the new version. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'm going to see you in the next tutorial. Bye.